Hi right, everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the People's Champion. Your host, I did a live stream earlier, I wanted to just sort of wrap up uh, one of the things we talked about. Uh, during the live stream is Michael Conforto. Now, as you know, Michael had played for the Mets from 2015 to 2021, became a free agent. Now, he said 132 home runs with the Mets when he was here and drove them about 396 RBIs. As you know, the Mets could use one more hitter in this lineup. Now, he did not uh, re-sign with the Mets. The Mets had offered him a contract in 2021, a five-year deal worth $100 million. He did not take it. They were even going to give him a six-year for $120 million, but he didn't take that contract. And he played out the season, and he had a dr- just a dreadful year. Hit 14 home runs, about 50 RBIs or so. Did not have a good year. It was a lousy a walk year for him. And he became a free agent. And the Mets offered him a qualifying offer, which is a uh, an extra year onto him, which was like basically you know rewards a player that's been with one team uh, his entire career. Now he uh, did not accept that qualifying offer, which was roughly about nineteen million dollars, and he became a, a real free agent. Meaning that if some team had signed him since he was given the qualifying offer, the Mets would have gotten a uh, draft pick in last year's uh, twenty twenty two draft. Uh, now, of course, we had the lockout from the beginning of December of last year through February, middle of February. And during that time, because players did not sign with teams, Michael was working out and he hurt his shoulder um, during that time. And when we came back to play, he didn't sign. There was a lot of mystery surrounding him. He didn't sign. He, and because of the qualifying offer, no team picked him up during the season. And it wasn't until we got to the All-Star break that it was discovered that, and I was like, there's very, something very strange going on with Michael. And as it turned out, he had an injury, which he didn't, which we didn't know about. And then when we got to August 2nd, which was the uh, trading deadline, uh, nobody picked him up. And there was no more qualifying offer attached to him. There was room, all kinds of rumors that he had some kind of two-year deal with the Astros. He didn't sign it for whatever reason. Um, and he would have been able to play in postseason if he had signed with a team prior to September 1st. He didn't do that. Uh, and he didn't play in September. So he basically spent the whole year sitting out due to injury and no contract, which is one of the more unusual ways to become a free agent. Now he's a, still a free agent. There's been very little talk up until the last couple of days that the Mets are interested in bringing him in. Now, we know the Mets have been very active. They brought in Justin Verlander. They brought in Cody Senga. They brought back Brandon Nimmo. They brought in David Robertson, uh, Jose Quintana, and they've been very busy, uh, especially over the last week. But we do know that this team, as well as they did offensively in terms of making contact, taking pitches, working counts, you know, working these pitches hard, that they go up against uh, hit by pitches, walks. They did great across the board. The slugging percentage is one of the best in, in baseball. But in terms of the home run ball, it was not very good. We know that. Um, now we do know that they have some players uh, that were in the minor leagues last year. They played a little bit in the majors. You know, Red Beatty and, of course, Francisco Alvarez are considered power potential players. Specifically Alvarez. But they're young players. Alvarez is 20. He's going to be 21 if he didn't turn 21 already. And Beatty is young. 23. So these are very young players still. Still developing. And they were kind of rushed to the big leagues. Because the Mets were kind of hamstrung with offense. And with uh, you know injuries and such. So I would not want to put any pressure on them. Now Michael has been here before. But he has not performed well under pressure, pressure situations. However, and I mentioned this during the live stream, the Mets now have a very professional manager, a very professional coaching staff, a coaching staff that was capable of winning 101 games in 2022, which is the second most in Mets history. We saw that Jeff McNeil won the batting title after being really terrible in 2021. We saw Francisco Lindor have one of the worst seasons in 21 and come back and have one of his best seasons in terms of home runs and 
of course, runs better than any. He had over 100, was over 100 runs. So he had a really renaissance to both of them. I would be very curious to see how Michael would perform playing under Buck Showalter. We also know that players that, that really don't stand out and really struggle here regress as well. We saw that with Don Smith. Uh, he got a non-tender and still hasn't found a team yet. But I would like to see how Michael would perform with Buck as the manager. I would also mention this, that Peter Alonzo drove in the most runs in Mets history under Buck. So Buck is very good with star players. And as you know, Michael was, was an all-star in, in, in 2017. And he's been a good player. But there have been times in his career that he, he's very much up and down. He's very streaky. I would love to see how a manager like Buck would uh, manage him in particular, seeing the successes of other professional players uh, now with this team. I, I mean, that is really what I'd like to see. Now, he is left-handed, Michael. Uh, he's not the best at hitting left-handed pitching. But he's been a good defensive outfielder. He, You could play him in right in a pinch, no problem. You could play right field every day. You could play him in center field if you need him. You could play him in left field if you have to. And if his arm is not 100%, you could DH him. Now, people have said, and they said in the live stream, that Michael, you know... He hasn't played in over a year, but he is 29 years old. He would not have lose, lost any bat speed, in my opinion. Players don't usually lose bat speed with an injury. So, now, it would not be a long-term deal with Michael. It would be a one-year deal. It would basically get his value up. A couple other things. City Field. The Mets have moved in City Field eight feet. That's an enormous thing for Michael because Michael's become basically a pole header. Also... There is no more shift starting next season. So when we enter into 2023, you're not going to see three uh, infields on the right side of the infield. So maybe balls that may not... So you know, they're going to have to really do some interesting things with the analytics in terms of how they position these players. Now, they're going to have to be more precise. But you're not. You're going to see more hits getting through the right side now. And that will help a player and a hitter like Michael Conforto to where maybe he's not a 250 hitter. Maybe it's a 265, 270 hitter. And that makes a big difference. Because that may be maybe the difference between, say, uh, uh, driving in 85 runs and driving 100 runs. Just to give you an example. So, I in the past have not been a fan of his. But I think with the new rules with the shift and playing under Buck and being in City Field with eight less feet to hit a home run right field, I think it's, a, it's not the worst idea in the world. We know what he's capable of. I don't have to worry about him being too old or anything like that. So you let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about this video. And, of course, uh, please subscribe to the Baseball Hut. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch. We've had a great year here. Year's almost over. We expect a big 2023. Going to be very busy on this on this channel the next few months until we get back to uh, games and spring training. So I appreciate the time you take, and I'll see you later.